Welcome to session two uh, on giving this uh, mini series on uh, video to uh, help you and to encourage you to reflect upon and to review um, the way uh, that you give. The second session, the first session, we talked about why we should give and, and discovered it's, it's because it reflects um, the, the image of God in us and uh, it's a, a way of showing our uh, thankfulness to God for all that he's done for us and uh, honouring God as an act of worship. And this second session is about what should I give? In other words, how much um, should I be giving? How much should I be uh, setting aside from uh, my income, from my resources um, to uh, plough into the kingdom of God and to the work of God? And uh, let's, to, to start that journey, uh, let's just revisit the scriptures that we started with last time. After his return from the defeat of Chedorlaomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheba, that is the king's valley. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him and said, Be blessed, Abraham, by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Now, Abraham, um, uh, out of his own generosity, out of his thankfulness, um, as an act of worship to God, gives a tenth of everything that he has gained um, through this exercise. He seems almost to do this instinctively um, and out of his own generosity. Uh, I want you to understand that at this point where Abraham gives 10%, um, the law has not been given. Uh, there are no rules and regulations written down um, uh, as follows in, in the, the later history uh, of this journey um, where you know we're required to give a tenth of this and a tenth of that. Abraham, uh, Abraham uh, because he's not had the name upgrade yet, Abraham gives 10% of, 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 of everything that he has brought back from this endeavor. Everything, let's call it his earnings, he's, he's, brought, he's giving 10% of what he's earned from this um, endeavor uh, without anybody prescribing that or laying down that it ought to be uh, that, uh, that figure. Uh, I'm saying this because a, a lot of people, when faced with the challenge uh, of uh, finding the faith to, to tithe, to give 10% of their income, um, want to say we're under grace, not under law. Um, but I, what I want you to see here is that Abraham's um, generosity has nothing to do with the law. It has nothing to do with um, instructions, uh, things that have been written down uh, and uh, presented to them as the way to do things. He actually does this quite naturally out of his own generosity and his own faithfulness. Let me now draw your attention to um, a verse in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, chapter 7 and verse 5. It says this, and those descendants of Levi who received the priestly office have a commandment in the law to take tithes from the people, that is, from their brothers, though these are also descended from Abraham. Uh, what the writer is drawing our attention to there is the normality of, uh, of tithing, of um, using that figure as 10% as our baseline uh, for our giving, and um, referring to the fact that it is commanded in the law. So uh, further on from um, uh, Abraham's uh, experience with Melchizedek, uh, there is, uh, you know, as we come to, to Moses, there is the giving of the law and there's all the regulations and everything else that kind of follows through that. And uh, the, the whole uh, thing of tithing is actually commanded and laid out and, and it, it makes its way uh, into the rule book uh, so that the, the uh, people of God uh, know what is expected of them. It gives them a baseline for their giving. And, and uh, you might want to ask the question, is it relevant for today? And um, the first thing that I want to say about that is this, that I always think we see the uh, a false divide in between the Old and the New Testaments, that actually um, the, that silent period where the Old Testament finishes and where the New Testament begins, we see that as kind of the end and then a beginning. And in some senses it is. It's kind of the, uh, you know, the, the New Testament is the beginning of um, a new age where, uh, you know, Jesus uh, um, 
comes to earth, he's uh, incarnate, he, he um, changes things forever. But it's part of an ongoing story. It's part of a continuous story. And so um, I think uh, seeing that divide there and saying, because it's Old Testament, it doesn't apply anymore, um, actually is, is fal faulty thinking because it's a false divide. And Jesus himself said that he didn't come to change the law, but to add to it, to enhance it. And so there is, I think, some expectation um, in, in Jesus that we would actually continue to uphold the important things that God has said to us uh, regarding um, our lifestyle, and particularly in that context, um, our giving. So um, I think it would be very difficult for us to discount the whole idea that actually this is an integral part, this is something that God has commanded and is an expectation on us uh, to do. Uh, that said, um, we are now under grace and not under law, but we can't use grace as an excuse for abandoning the things that God says is good, the things that God uh, th thinks we ought to be doing, we ought to be engaging in. Um, because if we do that, what we're saying is that in the Old Testament, God got it wrong. He didn't quite see things right and he didn't quite understand properly. And so he placed expectations on us that, that clearly were not good expectations, but actually the expectations placed on us are good expectations. God doesn't make those kind of mistakes. But because we're now under grace, um, we get some flexibility. We get the flexibility to go away beyond what the Old Testament asks us in terms of our giving. And um, we get a, a, a chance to really uh, push the boat out and excel and to, and to be abundant and enthusiastic in rising up to the challenges of being generous and, um, and honouring God with everything that we have. And to tithe, to give a 10% of, uh, of our income, of our resources, um, uh, is an appropriate starting place. It's a good place to begin. And uh, not to do this out of any sense of law or commandment, but because we are now under grace and are recipients of grace, to do it out of love and out of honour uh, for Jesus and, uh, and to be doing it with a gracious heart, with a thankful heart, and to be doing it enthusiastically. And we do get the chance now, because of grace, to really stretch out and go beyond the law, beyond the rule and the regulation, and to do something much more spectacular. <clears throat> Let me read to you uh, a, a verse from Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. It says this, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Now, what God is saying here quite simply is this, that actually um, we are called to give as an act of faith and an act of trust, that actually uh, if we give the way we are called to give, if we give with enthusiastic and thankful hearts, um, that God will pour out blessing from us on heaven. He says, bring in the full tithe. In other words, do everything that's expected of you. In other words, uh, be generous, be thankful, be, uh, you know, uh, give out of your abundance and, and, uh, and bring blessing. Um, uh, have that attitude about you and uh, fulfill the call on your life, fulfill the expectation that is on you. And if you do that, God says, he will open the windows of heaven and pour down for you blessing until there is no more need. In other words, um, that if we do the right thing by God, God clearly is committed to doing the right thing by us. That as we, um, you know, sometimes out of our need, sometimes with difficulty, and I understand the financial pressures that many of us have to deal with, but what we need here is to give as an act of faith that we do what is required of us, um, what is expected of us, um, as an act of faith, knowing that if we do what God has called us to do, that God will do exactly what he has promised to do and will come and will bless us. Um, I, I have uh, tithed for pretty much all of my Christian life, I think probably since I began to understand what tithing was about and as a baseline for my own giving. Um, I have given a, a minimum of 10% uh, of what I've earned and what I have been given. Um, I have given back to God and um, I, I want to say uh, it is my testimony that God has never let me down that financially. Um, I am still here to tell the tale and whilst there have sometimes been some 
thin years and sometimes been some fat years that actually um, through all of that uh, God has consistently provided and brought me through. Um, I have much to be thankful for and uh, every uh, intention to continue uh, in my devotion to God by bringing a tenth of everything that I have into his storehouse. Okay, so important things to take away from this session, um, I, I think, are these. The first is that to try and um, discard the idea of tithing because it was introduced in the Old Testament uh, uh, as not being relevant for today is, is clearly um, a no-no. There's no foundation for that sort of thinking. We need to understand that if God says something is good, then it's good. And giving is good for us. We should uh, learn to, to do that um, enthusiastically and generously and understand that we're presented with a baseline um, of giving a, a tenth of our uh, earnings, of our resources, back to God uh, as an act of worship in blessing him. Um, I think we also need to understand very clearly that this is an act of faith, that God makes a promise about what he will do if we bring the full tithe to him. And so there's a question there of, are we going to trust God? Are we going to believe what God says? Are we going to come in faith and give our resources to God? Um, or are we going to be faltering in our faith and be holding tightly on to the things that we have just in case? Um, and uh, clearly that's not the way the Bible calls us to live. Um, I want, uh, as, a, as a, a short word of testimony, to say that ever since I've understood the principle of tithing, I have tithed that I've always um, calculated and rounded up um, from my gross income, um, uh, what a, what a tithe of that is, and consistently given that as, for as long as I've understood uh, the principle, and treated that as the base point, as the starting point, as indeed the Bible does, that, that we are called to give that as a baseline, and then to consider other ways and um, other things that we should be doing in terms of giving um, financially and in terms of other resources, our time and our talent, uh, in order to uh, bless God, uh, to thank God, and in order to invest and to be building uh, the kingdom of God, to be building the church so that the purposes of God can be outworked through it. And finally, just in, in encouraging you just to say again that it's not just about money, although the money is important and, um, you know, um, money, uh, what people do with their money is a key indicator of, of where their faith is at and is a, a good kind of review point for us seeing how much we've grown and how much we have matured in God. But it's not just about money. It's also about our time, um, uh, how we spend our time, what, what time we give to the church, to the work of the church. Is it just that couple of hours on a Sunday? Is it just that couple of hours on a Thursday evening? Or do we actually think about uh, making a positive investment of our time into the purposes of God? And maybe there are other resources that we have. Maybe um, there are things that, that we own or things that we have access to that can be used in some measure to benefit the work of the church, that can be used to help in the building of the kingdom. And we are called to consider all of those things as part of our giving and to I think to review regularly is a good thing and to allow ourselves to be stirred and to be inspired so that we can excel and um, find a place of excellence in our giving and in our uh, blessing and uh, God and worshipping him through the resources that he has given us. So I hope that this second session has done something again to inspire you and help you with that and uh, look, look forward to seeing you in session three.